Hey everybody, it's Mr. Mott again. Uh, kind of continue with the uh, notes that we did um, and uh, build upon some of the terminology that I introduced you guys to in the last video. Um, so this idea about oxidation reduction, um, gaining and losing electrons is going to be a big deal. Um, also, uh, just recognizing sort of how a, a galvanic cell works and how do we understand uh, whether or not oxidation or reduction is happening. Uh, and some of the tools that we'll use. So uh, let's build upon the reaction that we had before that we had talked about the zinc donating electrons to the copper ion. So I'm going to rewrite that here below. So we had uh, our zinc reacting with our copper ions going to Zn2 plus and CuO. So again, the two half reactions that we looked at were the zinc turning into its ion and adding two electrons to the right hand side to uh, conserve our electrons there and our other reaction was copper ions gaining two electrons and turning into the uh, turning into the atom so we had uh, the oxidation happening and then we had the reduction happening now, um, what we're going to do is we're going to look at this reaction in terms of uh, the galvanic cell here. Um, but when we look at a galvanic cell, which we'll see in a moment, um, we need to be able to identify why is one of these going to happen before the other going to happen. So, um, so if we wanted to understand whether this reaction would sort of happen as is, what we would need to look at is the... Uh, the galvanic cell, and we'll kind of come back to this idea here in a little bit, okay? Uh, so this uh, image is the one that's found on page four of your packet. We have a number of these to kind of practice drawing uh, the galvanic cell. And so um, what we need to, what we can do there is understand, well, what's happening in the galvanic cell? Uh, how do we identify the anode, the cathode, things like that? So um, according to our... Um, our uh, mnemonic device, anox ate a red cat, oxidation is happening at the anode. So the oxidation that we said that was happening was the reaction of zinc turning into its ions. So typically what you have is that um, you have pieces of metal in here being one of the electrodes, and then this is going to be, in this case, it's going to be zinc. That means that in solution, oop, what happened there, that in solution... The liquid solution that we have here, these are your zinc 2 plus ions. And so in this, uh, what we think is happening here is that the zinc in this uh, side of our um, galvanic cell is the zinc is turning into the zinc ions. And so it's losing uh, electrons. This is the oxidation. And then the reduction is happening at the cathode. So red cat a reduction at the cathode. So this metal that's in here, this is our copper. And then that means that in solution here, we've got our copper uh, two plus ions. All right, so let's go ahead and write that reaction. So what's happening is that the reduction is happening. So the copper two plus is gaining electrons, turning into copper uh, atoms there. And so again, this is our, the zinc turning into its ion, losing electrons is the oxidation. And then this is our reduction. Okay. So the first thing that you want to be able to do uh, is to be able to identify why is oxidation or reduction happening. So in order to do that, what we need to do is, is understand um, what's called the uh, reduction potential. So as the, uh, as if a reduction is happening, uh, what change is going to result in terms of the electrical potential. And so what we have, or if you're thinking about this in terms of like volts, um, what's the transfer of volts uh, like? So what we want to do is look for these, uh, for these two reactions here um, on this standard reduction potential list, and these are widely available. Um, these would be given to you on the AP exam. You wouldn't have to hunt for them in a table, but... Um, in your book and in our worksheet, we've got this one here, all right? 
So first we identify and highlight the reduction potential of the copper. And these are all, in terms of format, they're all given in a reduction potential. So then we want to find the reduction potential between zinc and uh, zinc 2 plus and zinc atom. So that's a little bit further down, down here. Now what we want to understand is that, that this list is given, us, given to us in terms of all the reduction potentials, but we can't have re both reduction happening, uh, reduction happening at both the anode and the cathode. We need an oxidation and we need a reduction. So what we would need to do when we evaluate which combination of a reduction or oxidation is going to happen is that these two values have to add up to um, they have to add up to a value greater than zero. So uh, what we're going to do is that we're going to we're going to take this one and when we write it we're going to have to flip this. Okay, we're going to flip this uh, in order to make uh, the negative 0.76 a positive value. And so by flipping this, what we end up having is the reaction of uh, zinc turning into zinc 2 plus and its electrons in the same way that we've got written, okay? So uh, if we kind of go up to the top here, we can add in our, uh, our reduction and our oxidation potential difference, okay? So the, the what we call the E uh, potential for the oxidation of as as the zinc is written, this is going to be a positive 0.76 volts, and um, and so that's the uh, oxidation potential difference. The E of the reduction for the copper, I believe, was 0.34 positive. Let's just go ahead and double check. Yes, so uh, that one was positive point. Oops, three, four volts. And so what we want is a, is a total potential difference, which comes from adding the oxidation potential difference plus the reduction potential difference. This has to be a positive value. So, <clears throat> uh, so then you'd get 0.76 volts plus 0.34 volts and then your E total is going to be the sum of those. And so that's going to be, what is that going to be? About 1.1 volts, if I can do the math in my head. So what that means is that um, if we've identified our anode and our cathode correctly, instead of maybe a light bulb that we have uh, up here at the top that would be, be shining up here, if we had a voltmeter and, uh, and we had a voltmeter up here, that's connected through this wire. So from the cathode to the anode, you've got this wire kind of goes through. If we had a voltmeter connected up here, it would read 1.1 uh, volts. And that's how much uh, the voltage or the potential difference that's going through this battery. And uh, as a chemist or even an engineer, you can pick different chemicals uh, to create different potential differences based on whatever needs you have. All right, so in terms of understanding and being able to identify the anode, the cathode, um, you need to look at the potential differences. And if I just kind of go back to this, this paper here, and we knew, for instance, that we were going to, uh, we had uh, zinc and a zinc solution, a copper and a copper solution, and we wanted to make a battery, we want to understand uh, why there is a, which is the anode, which is the cathode, and that sort of thing. Um, we would, again, we'd have to kind of look at these two um, situations here and say, uh, how, how could I flip one of these and make a positive value? If we had chosen to flip this one and call this the, and then we thought the copper was donating electrons and doing this, well, then my E of my oxidation is going to be a negative 0.34. Well, when you add up your negative 0.34 plus your negative 0.76, you're going to end up with a negative potential differences, and that's not the way that the flow of electrons will go. So that's why that combination didn't work. All right. Let's see what else we can learn from, the, from our picture up here. 
all right? Um, so if we understand that this is the process that would be happening, we can identify the flow of electrons. So the flow of electrons was from the anode to the cathode, fat cat, from the anode to the cathode. So my flow of electrons, okay, if I draw my electrons here, is going to go this way. That's going to be my flow of electrons. Um, so that's one thing that you'd be want to be able to identify. So that's why we remember that mnemonic device, fat cat. Um, and then understanding sort of what this reaction is really telling us. What that means is that if oxidation is happening at the anode, what we have here uh, on the left, well, what's happening is that the zinc is, is reacting and uh, the zinc that's in our, uh, our anode, the zinc metal, is sending electrons uh, to the cathode. In that process, the zinc anode here um, is going to turn into the ions. Therefore, we're going to have a loss of mass um, at the anode. And then looking at the reaction between uh, at the cathode, you have copper ions turning into copper metal. So what you would have there is that you would actually have copper plating on the outside here. So the copper uh, anode, or excuse me, the copper cathode here, uh, the mass would increase. Okay, so what's going to happen is that as the electrons build up on the cathode, what's going to happen is that these ions that are in solution are going to uh, take those electrons and then they're going to form the copper um, on the outside of this. And so this would be one way that you could do electroplating, for instance. Um, so it's a very uh, efficient way to make a very pure amount of, uh, of, of a metal uh, through electroplating in this way. All right. Um, one thing I didn't mention, uh, which was present in some of the other videos you may have watched, um, is this idea about the salt bridge, okay? So the salt bridge is typically, um, it might be, it might be a, a piece of glass, and in that piece of glass there's a gel, and that gel we have electrolytes, and so typically it's potassium nitrate. So you have potassium ions, and you have your nitrate ions. And so as this chemical process occurs, um, we can think about, you know, why we would need this salt bridge, because if we didn't have the salt bridge, uh, then um, if we didn't have the salt bridge, then uh, the reaction actually wouldn't really go anywhere. If you hook this up initially in the lab, you might see uh, an initial change in voltage, and then it would go to zero. So in terms of uh, why we need that, if you think about what happens with the um, uh, with these copper ions, so as these copper ions react and turn into copper uh, in the uh, solution at the uh, the copper solution that you have, you're going to have a, a reduction in terms of the um, the number of co positive ions is reduced, and so what you would have is that you'd have your copper, or excuse me, your potassium ions flow into uh, the solution that way. And then conversely, if you had, um, if you have at the anode, you have an increase in your zinc ions, well, you're increasing the positive charge. And so what you have is you have your nitrate ions flowing down into the anode, into that solution to counterbalance that buildup of charge. So, um, so when you're thinking about um, why we need the salt bridge, um, you can think it about it in terms of counteracting the, the buildup and charge. Um, you can also think about it in terms of sort of, uh, it allows a, a complete circuit to be made. Um, so both of those are, are two good ways of thinking about why we need the salt bridge. All right. Hopefully that was helpful. We'll do some more practice problems and show you some AP problems that um, that you'll see. Uh, it's very typical to have some type of galvanic cell on the AP exam. Thanks for watching.